In this video, we're looking at blades, blades, and more blades. So, for any of you who are learning to use a scroll saw, for any of you who are looking to improve your work with a scroll saw, or anybody thinking about getting into scroll saw work, blades are important, very important, because ultimately they're on the, pardon the pun, but on the sharp end of what you're doing. So, what are the ones we're going to look at? Well, we're going to look at reverse turf blades, and we'll explain what the difference is in a minute, our spiral blade, and our regular blade. So, for instance, um, if you buy a scroll saw like this, a Hegna one, Hegna send a pack of standard blades with them. Um, the reverse turf blade, the difference with that one there, uh, you get six teeth that actually go in the opposite direction. And yeah, we'll look at how that works. What is the difference with having that setup? The spiral blade then, as you can see, it's a twisted piece of um, metal, twisted blade, and that allows you then to work in all directions on face value sounds great but let's have a little look let's see the results so let's look at the test that we're going to do we've got a couple of pieces of wood i mark this one out slightly thicker piece of wood so we've got three straight lines we're going to see how the three different types of blade get on cutting that straight line we've got three hearts marked out but we've also got an internal heart sorry about that i can't get away from it i'm a love spoon carver so we're working with hearts all the time. So I thought, how can I demonstrate um, these three different types of blades doing the outside cuts of like a little key ring? And how can we also demonstrate the pierce work, the difference with working with the different ones? And I thought, well, yeah, three heart-shaped key rings would be perfect for the job. So that's what we're gonna do now. We'll demonstrate how those three different blades, how they get on with doing those different jobs. Now, a couple of things before I do get into that. The um, number system. You'll see with blades, if you're starting out, numbers. Number five, number seven, number nine. From all of the blades I've ever used, the higher the number, the thicker the wood that it can cut. So uh, a number nine can cut, you know, as general rule, thicker woods more easily than a number five. One thing I do note though, we, we use, um, Nikwa blades, uh, I've used Pegas blades, and I've used the ones that Hegna send with us, so those are three different ones. The numbers I do find vary differently, so you know, you, you'll have to sort of figure that out to a degree. So what I'm saying is a number nine a Pegas blade performs differently than a number nine Nikwa blade. So something for you to look at. Another part then, and this is not just geared towards then beginners, this is a question that I put to um, more experienced scroll sawers. The spiral blade. One point I always say with this one here is the problems you get in clamping it. Real, real nuisance. Now, I have had some comments on some of our other videos from people saying that the uh, Flying Dutchman blades, they're actually now producing blades that have got a flat end, which makes them easier to clamp. So because this is a sort of comparison between the three blades, that's the first comment I would say for a comparison that is a detriment to the spiral blades. This one's a Pegasus one because it's probably cheaper for manufacturing. The, the, the blade is completely twisted all the way down, which does make it more difficult for clamping. So that's the sort of first mark against a spiral blade in comparison to a regular blade and a reverse cut blade is the difficulty in clamping it. But again, anyone got any comments on that? Let me know, let me know your thoughts, put it in the comment section. So there we are. Those are just sort of introductory thoughts. Let's get into the project and let's demonstrate how these three different blades perform. First up, we're gonna be working with our regular blade. So that's with all of those teeth pointing in the same direction. Just to demonstrate how you put a Hegna saw blade in, if you are a beginner, on the side of our Hegner machine here, there's a guide to show you which way the teeth should be facing. We put our little holder in with the spanner 
line it up with the direction that the teeth should be facing and tighten it up. So you push it all the way into the holder until it's just touching the screw. And then from there, we insert it in our machine and we will do our tests to see how it performs. In terms of the design, all of the teeth point in the same direction. The one issue that this gives you is that you end up with just a little bit of a whisker on the bottom. So as that tooth is cutting, it just leaves that whisker there in the finish. And that means that afterwards, we have a little bit of extra work to do just to tidy it up. In terms of the feed speed, so the speed that you can feed the wooden item through the blade, through your scroll saw, it is the second fastest. Other than that whisker, it does give you quite a, a fine finish that, that doesn't require a lot of finishing after you've done your scroll saw work. Next up, we are working with our reverse tooth blades. So, slightly different process to putting these ones in. The reverse tooth blade has six teeth that point the opposite way. And it's those that we want to the bottom of the scroll saw. So the six teeth that go the wrong way, they go into the bottom holder. So again, get it right in up against that screw, tighten it up and then put it in to your scroll saw. The reverse tooth blade has a few design advantages over our regular blade. The main difference is because we have those six teeth on the bottom going in the opposite direction, it does give us a cleaner cut. We do not have as much time spent finishing afterwards, just taking that whisker off. The feed speed is a little bit quicker because it's cutting that bottom edge. It's a little bit cleaner and quicker. So it does have some advantages over the regular blade. Our final blade that we're working with is our spiral blade. Now, um, for the purpose of this, I'm gonna leave it as it actually comes to us. One thing that we have done, and one thing others have suggested doing, is to flatten flatten the ends where they are spiral like, the, uh, like this, um, so you can get a better grip on it. But again, what you do, you check that those teeth are running in the correct direction in terms of the holder. You then slide it into your grip as far as you possibly can tighten it up and then again over into the scroll saw and away you go i do find with this that i have to adjust the tension on the scroll saw differently to make sure that we get the blade under the correct amount of tension the spiral blade has both advantages and disadvantages when compared with our regular blades and reverse tooth blades. When it comes to the finish, I find that you get a finer finish after you finish cutting on the reverse tooth blade and on the regular blades. The spiral blade requires more hand sanding and more finishing after you've finished the cutting. The speed that you can feed the item through the saw itself is slower. When it comes to the advantages, you can cut in different directions. As opposed to the other two blades, where you can only cut in that single direction, meaning that you have to continually rotate the wooden item to be able to follow the line, with the spiral blade, you don't have to do this. The blade can cut forwards, backwards, side to side, and everywhere in between. Depending on the project you're doing, different blades have different advantages. For those of you who are interested in my own opinion, uh, I choose to use the reverse tooth blades. For myself, it's a better finish both on the top edge and the bottom edge. It requires the least amount of hand finishing 
afterwards and it's also the fastest feed speeds. The specific blade that I choose is a Nikwa number nine reverse tooth blade. If you're interested in what I do, doing similar projects, that's the blade that I would recommend. One thing it is worth noting, always, regardless of what blade you do use, use a sharp blade. You get a better finish, you don't get that burning. So use a nice sharp blade. Another bit of advice if you're starting is to get a small packet of all three and try it out yourself. Do your own experiments, find out what suits you best. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget, put it in the comments section, which is your favorite blade? Which blades are you gonna try out? And which projects are you gonna have a go at making?